Alexio! thing just like did a half stall on me when it got bound up right there i really hope it's not getting hot already oh shit get off of it i think i broke something yep Ran hard. The break? Yep. Oh, buddy. Go, Rekka, go. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Hope y'all are having a good one. So, figured, uh, since I kind of spread out all of the videos from Axial Fest uh, per each rig, uh, I was just going to do like a recap, kind of an overview video. Um, just like down at Beat the Creek, I really didn't record a whole lot. Um, one, it was just ridiculously hot. So trying to keep moving was key. And also I was just enjoying running the trucks without having to worry about, you know, fiddling with the camera and all that good stuff. So the runs that I did get recorded and posted up, um, that if you watched all of them, you could probably see it was mainly just the trail to and from the quarry and then a little bit running around the quarry um, the meat and potatoes of the whole week really didn't get recorded at all so um figured i'd just kind of go through how everything held up um what did well what didn't do well what needs to be changed and or fixed you know recap stuff so probably what i'll do is uh i'll just kind of plug in each truck and we'll take it for a little run around the woods here it is raining off and on um so we'll see how it goes but instead of just standing here pointing out things at trucks that aren't moving, uh, we'll go ahead and put around the woods and we'll talk about each rig individually. But as far as I can remember, I believe everything is still running and driving. So hopefully this goes how I plan. We're going to start off with the Bronco. This thing, for as quickly as I threw everything together and uh, kind of rushed it last minute, this thing did really well. I had a couple minor hiccups, nothing too serious. Um, the main issue being uh, 
ended up breaking the pan hard mount on the axle side. Um, I was able to kind of trail fix, band-aid the situation. Uh, the mount is not completely busted off, but it's pretty well shot. So I think I'm just gonna have to get a new axle housing. Had to excuse the neighbors are shooting. That's what that popping is in the background. But um, as far as the Bronco, that panhard was really the only thing that broke. Um, the exhaust tips that I put on the rear, I kind of figured that was going to be a hang up point and they'd probably get busted off. Um, surprisingly, they did not bust off, but uh, they did get hung up quite a few times and they're a little whopper jawed, but no biggie there. Um, the bumpers you know, kind of killing the approach and departure angle. I was getting a little frustrated right at the beginning because one, I wanted to keep this thing as clean as possible to take it into the concourse but um i don't know i was i was treating this thing like it was a damn shelf queen for some reason and uh once i finally got out of that kind of a mindset and started driving it how i needed to be driving it um i started putting this thing in honestly in some crawler type situations and for as top heavy as this thing is and as capable as it shouldn't be this thing was pulling some lines that it had no business pulling so i was thoroughly surprised and uh, very happy with how it was performing And I will say that at least one of my top three highlights um, with this whole entire Axial Fest week come from this thing right here. Um, it actually, during concourse, um, I had quite a few people come up and taking pictures of it and you know, telling me how much they liked it and the whole nine. These Broncos, you don't really see a whole lot of people doing much with the stock body. Um, yeah, not that I did a whole lot with it. It's pretty much just paint and a different cow hood. But even that sets it apart from every other white and blue and green bronco out there um but what uh what really kind of tickled my fancy and made me feel good about the scramble that i went through in the last couple weeks before axial fest getting this thing ready was uh a couple of the uh staff i guess for axial or if they were just there for axial fest and doing the social media for it i'm not sure uh, who exactly it was because they didn't actually come over and talk to me personally about it but uh, they had overheard a couple of them talking about how much they liked it and then after uh axial fest was over um the axial instagram had the uh, picture of this thing posted up uh, i think i took a screenshot of it and put it in the video of uh, the bronco for axial fest but the caption on it was something along the lines of the builds that axial fest never disappoint or something along those lines is something small like that 
just being featured in a post um, from the manufacturer or the people that are putting on the event. That was really cool. Um, this thing didn't even get a second look during the concourse, which I didn't have any kind of high hopes for anything like that. Uh, but just getting that little bit of recognition, that uh, made me feel good about the whole project, the whole ordeal that I went through. Mad rush trying to get this thing done and ready to go. But the icing on the cake was just how well this thing performed. I mean, there's uh, there's nothing on here except for the internals of the transmission that I didn't touch, tear down, rebuild, or replace. Um, I went through this entire truck. So, yeah. Very happy with it. Um, I don't know what else I really want to change on it. Um, bumpers. I may leave that front bumper. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it looks pretty good on there, but it is really bulky. And uh, sticks down and out quite a bit, even though I've got it sucked up and in as far as I can. Um, get that front axle housing replaced. Maybe do something with the front bumper and the uh, exhaust tip situation. That's pretty much it. Um, this one doesn't really need much. Thought about maybe putting a sway bar on it, but in all honesty, it, I don't think that it needs it. I don't plan on going out trying to slay killer lines with it. So I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with uh, how everything's going. But if I do decide to keep the exhaust on here, I need to figure something else out. I didn't want to have them coming straight out the back and I didn't want to have just 90s sticking out the side. Um, I'm kind of a fan of the 45s. So I'm gonna have to figure something out there. But other than that, I think she's pretty well good to go. Uh, Bronco was a success for the week. Next up is the Rekka. So, I only really had one issue with this thing the whole week. Um, I only ran it a couple times, but I keep forgetting to put a longer rear drive shaft in this thing. Um, since I extended the wheelbase, I never did go back and uh, put a longer drive shaft in it. Um, other than that, I didn't have any issues with this thing at all. So, I will say I did not do any towing over there at Axial Fest. Um, I never even spooled out any of my winches um, but I didn't have to which kind of leads me into my next point this thing gets the award for biggest surprise of the week even with these red cat RTR tires this little guy right here pulled lines that 
I would have bet the farm he wouldn't have made and just chugged up it like a trooper. Um, I, for it being a straight axle, being as heavy as it is, and especially with most of the weight being in the back of it, um, this thing left an impression, that's for sure. Um, so much so that uh, I really want to see what it can do with some decent tires. So at some point here, uh, at least before the Great Lakes gauntlet in a few months, this thing's going to get six new tires. Not sure what I'm going to go with just yet, but uh, I've got uh, I've got high hopes for this guy right here and I also uh, need to finish slash address the uh, boom and winch situation on the back of it um, I noticed in the video where I was towing the general ecto uh, that little cheap Amazon scale winch doesn't really have the uh, holding power that I need um, for the boom on the back of it and I also want to have that boom operational to where um, I can make it go up and down uh, off of a switch right now it's just sitting on a shock so I've got some work to do there, but that's uh, that's the plan anyways. So I actually had quite a few people stop and talk to me and ask me about the wrecker. Um, about the same as with the Bronco. I think a few more people were probably interested in this just because uh, kind of stands out a little bit more as being something custom um, that bed uh, i can confidently say there's not another one like it out there that's uh unique to say the least but i don't know if you can tell very easily but by the blue tech sticker over top of the green one i also entered the wrecker in uh the concourse event um, I also did not have any kind of hopes for this thing winning anything by any means um, but I had never entered any concourse event before ever and I think I chose the wrong groups to put both of the rigs in um, I just kind of looked around at everything when I got there and just based off of what the rigs looked like, kind of put them in the same grouping. And I ended up in the uh, adventurist group and that is not where either of these trucks should have been. Uh, still not exactly sure where the wrecker should have probably been put but the Bronco should have been in a daily driver group or something along those lines. Um, Cause like I said, I, neither one of these rigs even got a second look from the judges. Um, I feel like that sounds arrogant. I wasn't expecting to win. And I mean that wholeheartedly, but uh, they're definitely two very unique trucks, regardless of what group they're in. And uh, they didn't even stop to look. So that, after hearing them talk about what they was looking for in other trucks while they were picking their winners out of the adventure group, I definitely had these in the wrong place for sure. So. They possibly could have done better in a different group. I don't know. But while we were sitting there for the concourse event, um, 
I had to, let's see, I think there was, there was at least six or seven people that I had to shoo away from this thing. Um, so, uh, Joe Ropes was there and he had this little daily challenge kind of a thing going on where he had some sort of a Sasquatch figure, or I think he had two of them, uh, hidden out and about in the woods somewhere. And if you found them and took them back to his vendor's tent, they would uh, give you some sort of a prize or something along those lines. Well, I think I actually had this guy here posted up in the back of the Bronco. And uh, I had the Bronco and the Wrecker sitting side by side at the concourse. But I had a number of people come up and you'd see them start to bend over and they wanted to pick it up and they was like is this is this the bigfoot is this the big is this the sasquatch and i'd get a chuckle every time and have to shoot them away nope that one's mine so i'm not even sure what uh what the other sasquatch looked like but uh, I was really surprised um, since their, I guess is not really their theme, wasn't really Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but that was uh, their logo um, for Axial Fest Badlands this year, and they've been posting that up for a while, which is why, you know, I had that guy I've uh, got all the little Sasquatch driver heads in almost all of my rigs. I think the only the only rig that I took over there that didn't have um, a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, whatever you want to call it, uh, was the Gapra. And that's just because it doesn't have a driver or interior or anything of the sort. But I didn't, I didn't see any other Sasquatch related uh, drivers, Sasquatch related like theme trucks or anything. It was kind of surprising. Um, yeah, it's kind of weird. I, uh, I've never been one to do the theme inspired builds or anything like that uh for any events but this year i decided to give it a whirl and uh it's kind of like with the uh general lee ecto that i took down to beat the creek they had their bootleggers moonshiners thing going on down there and uh I figured having a General Lee was uh, gonna be like the obvious choice. I figured there'd be, you know, at least a dozen or two down there. And I only seen one other one. So, kinda weird. But I'm not hating. At least I was uh, a little bit different. But yeah as far as this thing goes i definitely need to uh i've got to cut the length drive shaft laying around the garage somewhere so i need to get that thing put in here and uh then as far as running and driving goes this thing's golden um then i need to uh, get back to work on the boom and winch situation and i'll get tires for this thing at some point and this thing will be good to go but this one definitely gets the blue ribbon for uh most surprising performance of the week that's for sure um hadn't really done much trailing with this thing since i built it uh 
so when I finally got it out there and put it into some hairy situations it uh, definitely far exceeded my expectations to say the least so I'm uh, very happy with this one especially since this one um, I can say that I built from the ground up started out as a builder's kit and um, everything on top of that was all me so very very happy with this one good job Rekka now it's Gapper's turn There's not much that needs to be said about the Gapra. This thing does what it does and it does it well. There's only one, possibly two real issues that I had that are not even really issues, but as far as the trailing event goes, Eh, maybe issues. So the only real complaints, are, and they're not really complaints, but as far as being a mainly trail based event at Axial Fest, this thing, it's a crawler. I built it to be a crawler, I built it to be a line killer, so it's not great on trail. It has way too much overdrive and not near enough wheel speed. So getting back and forth to the quarry where the rocks are, um, it kind of didn't suck, but it kind of sucked. Um, you know, it's when this thing's completely wrapped out full speed it is all metal gears everywhere so it is singing it is loud as hell sounds like it's going 100 mile an hour but maybe doing two mile an hour and that front axle is just digging 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 dragging its ass around like a dog with worms but once you get this wormy dog back to where the rocks are, that's where this thing shines. And that's where I have so much fun with this thing. Uh, especially since I put this uh, Corvair body on it. If you just look at it from a distance, um, it doesn't look like it should do the things that it does. And uh, yeah, I, I have an absolute blast just taking this thing out and trying to find the most ridiculous lines that look like they should never be possible. Granted, I'm not saying this thing is the best in the world. You know, it's it's not a MOA, it's not a sporty, it's not a five thousand dollar professionally built comp rig. This is a budget redneck barely above amateur build. But I'm here to tell you what, I would put this thing up against anybody that wanted to put their truck up against it. I, I have had nothing bad to say about this truck since I built it. I freaking love this thing. And it's not perfect. It's got its little quirks and problems. But for what it is and what it does, just can't complain about it. And I don't have 
have any rocks here in this section of the woods to crawl so we're stuck with mud basically wet dirt there was one real bummer uh, the day that I took this back to the quarry and was crawling with it um, I had recorded a couple clips um, where I was having some pretty serious battles going on and it ended up being more than uh, more than was doable with this thing um, at least for my patience and how hot it was so I ended up putting the camera away and uh, drove around a couple corners and found a shady spot that had a little bit of a breeze took my backpack off got something to drink and uh, found this one section um, that you know I thought uh, just for just for shits and giggles sorry i'm trying to get a tail there we go off of this thing um just for shits and giggles i'm just gonna see if i can at least crawl up the uh first part of this little hill it had a couple uh couple shelves to get up to the very top of it i feel like i had a stick wrapped around my axle there Anyways, uh, just an absolutely ridiculous hill, uh, top to bottom anyways. So I figured, eh, I'll just dick around here for a few minutes, cool off, and see if I can get up to the first little shelf. And uh, so I messed around there for probably 20 minutes, uh, fighting, 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 trying to find a new line, fighting, fighting got up on the first shelf i was like oh uh, let's see if i can get up on the second shelf so just about the time i started uh trying to get up on the next section of it uh my buddy who was uh the guy in the crocs it was all the time tumbling his truck in the background of the videos um he finally met up with me out there and he started playing around on the side of it. And I can't remember. I may have said something about this is ridiculous, but I'm going to get it. So I sat there for another probably 10, 15 minutes and I got up on the next shelf. And the last little bit of it wasn't near as bad as the first two sections, but it was still pretty rowdy and uh so we messed around there for a minute and lo and behold made it all the way to the top of that whole thing got up there and i let out a big old woo happy as hell couldn't believe i just you know damn near an hour i spent probably trying to get up that whole hill climb there got done with it talked with my buddy for a minute took back off getting ready to head back up to the camper and uh the thought hit me i didn't record any of that like damn near an hour of the most badass crawling that i had out at that entire place all week and i didn't record any of it so basically it didn't happen but we saw it happen it was freaking awesome um yeah words cannot explain what transpired there on that hill other than freaking wow but that's what this thing does man and some stuff it'll walk right up it you know just like you figure it would um some stuff you'll have to fight and claw and scratch your way to something you know that looks like you should just be able to hop right up it but 
if you stay at it long enough if need be um this thing will do it it's crazy this thing still amazes me every single time i take it out and put it through some gnarly shit it just does it but axial fest is mainly a trail event and uh that is not this thing's forte so that's really the only complaint that i could even potentially have that right there full speed two maybe three mile an hour that's not enough wheel speed to do anything on trails with or dirt hill climbs or anything like that so that was uh the biggest issue that i had with this thing so it's not really an issue so i had a ton of fun back in the quarry this is uh still and probably always will be one of my favorite rigs just because I can crawl, climb, just battle the rocks and do it as slowly as my heart desires. <laughs> if you can't tell, that thing's moving. But anyways, that's the Gapra. It does Gapra things. Those things are not run trails. Well, I was planning on running the Capra, but the more I think about it, the more this video is getting long as hell already. There's really no need. And I've got a feeling like this thing is kind of hurt. So there's really no need to run it. I'll just kind of go over what's happening here and uh, then we'll move on. So a while back, I had done a set of, I guess you would consider them cut and shut ruptures. I took the big 2-2 set of ruptures, cut a section of them out to where they could have been run on one nine wheels and uh, glued them back together. So they're full, full width, two, two ruptures, but they're shorter. They're, I think, 5.2-ish inches tall instead of 5.8 or 5.9, whatever it is. And I had them on a set of weighted two, two wheels. Um, and I ran them on this thing for a good little while um, i ran it over at the indoor competitions a couple times over in greenville um, i ran it down at beat the creek ran it up here in the pit several several times down at the quarry ran them for a while uh, for a little bit everything was fine but then i started running into overheating issues um motor got hot on me a couple times and actually shut off it got so hot and uh yeah so i uh took those off i figured oh, i'll put the one nines back on it um never had an issue with those it should be good but lo um, and behold even with the one nines back on here, um, if I get into some slow crawl binding up situations for more than just a couple minutes, this thing is still getting hot. So I think this little 1200 SE Fusion is uh, on its way out the door. Um, yeah. So the whole ordeal with this particular rig is I am locked into the uh, tournament 
over with Hello RC, their trucks with cups, Cheerio challenge. Um, and I cannot change or upgrade anything. Um, changing the paint is fine. Um, I've still got the crawlers with the dual stage inserts. Um, and they are on a different set of wheels, but they're the same wheel. They're just different color. This thing has been unchanged at its core since what last October I think um, so I'm to the point now where I'm babying the hell out of this thing like I'm not even gonna run it today because I've got to save whatever motor is left in here to finish up that tournament whenever the finals come around um, so over at Axial Fest I think I only took it out once um, ran a couple trails did a couple light duty climbs out in the quarry it never hit thermal but this thing I don't know I was prob probably um, eight ten minutes into my run I'd have to go but I could look at my video uh, I believe I actually mentioned it in the video because uh, I had pretty much started recording as soon as I got this thing out that day and before we even got halfway back to the quarry uh, this thing was hot so other, other than that everything's going good I'm not having any issues with it the shocks are blowed out um, I'm tired of this cage I I've got so many things I want to change on there that by the time this tournament's over this thing's getting tore down to bare bones and it's probably not ever going to look anything close to like what it does now so that's the capper four wheel steer um, it's been a solid unit but it's coming down to the end of its life here and I've got to save what little fight it's got left for uh, the finals of the Trucks with Cups championship so we'll uh, save this thing for another day and we'll move on to the uh, final Axial Fest attendee so last but not least got the Wraith now I don't know how blatantly obvious it is but aside from loading and unloading the vehicles um, out of the full-size vehicles to get back home, I have not touched any of these things, like, at all. <clears throat> this thing is still covered in mud, and, uh, ooh, it's rough. So this thing here, um, I'm going to have to tear into it. I'm pretty sure that I've at least blown out or bent one or two of the shots along with a few other things. Um, we're just going to run and gun here. It looks like it's about to start raining again. So this thing had a, uh, a rough week took it out a couple times and uh, hit all the mud holes and rough hill climbs I could with it and it looks like it and it drives like it now um, everything actually held up uh, the last time I took a set of AR-60s to Axial Fest it did not end well but this go around everything still works so shocks definitely need addressed um surprisingly i don't feel the need to put 
a sway bar on this thing like I thought I was gonna want. Um, the, I, I swapped out uh, the wheels. Uh, I had a set of uh, metal two twos on here before they were aluminum and uh, one of them ended up bent at some sort or some time or another so that was uh, no good so I put these plastic B box on here that come off of the same bomber that these axles did um, which is great definitely a lot less stress on the drive line while I'm ripping around but um, they're vented wheels and I didn't think twice about it when I put them together so there's uh, quite a bit of water still inside of them so I had this thing buried good a couple times I don't believe I ever got it stuck to where I had to pull it out uh, but it got good and buried a couple times um, the body is still in relatively good shape I said the axles are all good uh, three gear transmission still is good surprisingly because uh, it's just all stock still got the slipper clutch on it it's just cranked down all the way um, I did have a little bit of an issue with the motor and or ESC it's got a castle uh, I think it's got the copper head in it and a 2280 uh, censored motor um, it shut off on me a couple times and there for uh, probably half of one of my runs I was getting uh, some sort of a beep code and I'm not 100% sure what was going on there because I've disabled all of the beep alarms except for the sensor lost warning um, but it was still running fine like it wasn't cogging at low rpms on startup like it would if you didn't have the sensor wire hooked up um, so there's something goofy going on there that i never quite got figured out but you uh you cannot tell what color Sasquatch is. This thing was covered. So I purposely left all of these trucks alone all week just so that I could come out here with them in the condition that they were in when I left Axial Fest. <laughs> so this one's gonna be fun to clean, but it did, uh, it did its thing. It tore up the mud holes. Um, these tires, they're not good at crawling, but boy, they dig. They dig in the mud and the dirt and everything. It's the race. As long as the axles hold up, there's really nothing to complain about with this one. But after, uh, after the way that these axles kind of pooped out on me last year at axial fest uh, i wasn't sure what to expect but it's good i don't have no grinding or clicking or nothing so yeah i think uh the wind is kicking up here it's starting to get a little bit darker in the sky so I think I'm gonna start working my way back to the house, get all these things unloaded, and uh, get the hose out. So, just wanted to 
do a little recap, kind of go over a few things um, about each rig. Just the way that I did the videos for Axial Fest this year is a little bit different. <clears throat> um, I don't know. I feel like this was still the better option, even though I didn't really do any talking during the videos with each rig. Um, didn't really film any of the good stuff as far as I'm concerned while I was over there, but tried to get a little bit of something recorded. So figured I'd kind of go over how everything did, what issues I had, which didn't really have a lot. Um, things went really well, honestly. The uh, biggest gripe that I had the entire time over there was the heat. It was so damn hot. It was just miserable. I, uh, I got to give it up to the people that go over there and camp in tents. I, I would not have survived that week if I had to sleep in the tent and couldn't, you know, go to the camper and uh, get out of the sun. And lucky enough this year, uh, my buddy got a campsite that was full hookup. So we had air conditioning and I'm here to tell you that was an absolute lifesaver this time around. Imagine two full battery packs of that kind of shit with mud holes. This thing's a trooper. But I think that'll pretty much wrap it up. Back to the quad now. So call it a day. Um, if you got any questions, just give me a shout down in the comments or something. If anybody's made it this long. It might be a couple of you but all in all it was an awesome week um i've got a pretty awesome group of axial rigs here um lucky enough to have put these at least some of these i've put together others are still mostly stock uh not pointing fingers here about the ones that i'm not allowed to mess with but um yeah the orange axial fleet solid good to go get a couple things tweaked and changed and uh all in all good to go um coming up next i'm not sure even though I've got some things to do with a couple of these in particular, um, I feel like it might be time to look into starting a new project. Not sure what that's going to be, but the next event coming up is the Great Lakes Gauntlet. And I'm not 100% sure if uh, I've got the best possible setup for uh i don't know king of the rocks or the gauntlet so we'll see we'll see what happens anyways i hope uh you enjoyed or stuck around or whatever if you did stick around this far thank you for watching i hope there was at least a little bit of entertainment here i know there wasn't a whole lot of uh exciting running footage going on but i just felt the need to uh kind of explain some things and recap some things for uh the whole of axial fest it was a success and we will be going back next year 
hopefully with more and better rigs so anyways i hope y'all have a good one and we'll catch you in the next one later Axiom!